everyone, Stan Watkins out here at the Carpenters Training Center in Pleasanton, California. And today, I would like to demonstrate how to set up a theodolite. First, we have our survey point. We have our adjustable tripod legs, and we have our instrument, the theodolite. So we're gonna start with the legs. I like to take my legs, set them together in front of me, unclamp every clamp, and I like to bring it up to about just below chest level. Then I'll go ahead and I'll relock the clamps. Now I can take and put it over my survey point. Put one leg down, put the other down. Try to get it as close as you can, all right? Now most of you, you wanna take out your torpedo level and you wanna set it on top of here. Not necessary, right? I can stand back. I can find something horizontal like on the wall or in the area and I can take my legs and adjust it one way. Already done, okay? But now, before we take the instrument out of the box, let's go over a couple of safety features, right? We never want to take the instrument out of the box until our legs are set up and we're ready to take it out and put it straight onto the tripod. The theodolite, it's a, it's a digital and it's very precise, right? It's usually commonly used out in commercial jobs for measuring horizontal and vertical angles. And it's used for building lines. And I've even used it out in the field to set bolt templates in a straight grid line. So it has many, many different uses for it, right? So we're gonna open up the box. You can see it has a handle. You never wanna grab this by the scope. Remember, it's a precise instrument. If you drop this instrument, it's gonna to have to be recalibrated. That could be expensive. Not to mention it could be a loss of time out on your job, right? And your boss is probably gonna be pretty upset with you, huh? So we always wanna grab it by its handle. Reach down here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight to the tripod with it. I'm gonna line it up with its threaded screw. Thread it in. Now here's another important feature. See how it has leveling knobs? We wanna put each one of those over a leg and make sure we put it centered into the base of the plate. Then we're gonna tighten it. Do not over tighten it. Just snug it, right? You don't have to crank on it. All right, next thing is, as soon as we get the instrument on the tripod, we need to close our case. We wanna keep it free from dust and debris, right? We don't want anything in there. We can move our case out of the way. Now, let's go over a couple of features, All right? So you have your tangent screw. This is your horizontal tangent screw. The outside is a clamp. When I tighten it, the machine will not turn. The minute I untighten it, it will turn 360 degrees either way. You have the same thing right here. This is your vertical tangent screw. It has a clamp too. You loosen it, it'll flip over. 180 degrees, right? Back and forth. You tighten it, it won't move. Okay? The tangent screw is for when you lock it, you can turn the tangent screw and the gun will move slowly one way or the other. So you can lock onto your target. You can get really close, lock it, and then use the tangent screw to put it right on its mark. You have your optical plummet. This is where we're gonna start right here, the optical plummet. The optical plummet, you look in it and it'll shoot straight down to your surveyed point. If you look at the outer knob, that's your focus. The inner knob is your crosshairs. You know, like on a rifle, rifle scope, it has crosshairs, so does the optical plummet. So when you look through it, you're gonna put those crosshairs right on your surveyed point. And if you can't see it, you're gonna focus it in. You always wanna make sure that your crosshairs are nice and a dark black line, right? If you can't see them, you need to use the inner one to focus that black line in. As soon as you get it, use the outer one to focus your view in. So I'm gonna look at it real quick. See where we're at. So it's off a little bit, right? No big deal. I'm not worried about that yet. I, if I want to, I can put my foot here. 
Sometimes it's kind of hard to see where we're at, especially if we pick this gun up and I take it to a different point, I might not be able to see that point. I might be a mile off of it, right? But I can put my foot here and now I can just take, pick my gun up, get it close. Pretty close right there. Make sure it's focused in. Perfect. All right. So I can step on my legs, make sure my gun doesn't go anywhere. Another really valuable point is you can use this gun in the wind. It's very precise in the wind, but you never want to leave it unattended. Because once again, if it blows over, what's going to happen? It's going to have to go into the shop. It's going to have to be recalibrated. And then your boss is going to be mad at you. So make sure you always attend this gun when it's windy outside. All right. So you have two leveling bubbles on this instrument. One is on your base plate and one is right here on the upper part of your control panel. This is your leveling vial. This is your base plate. So we are going to start with our base plate. Okay. Very important. Don't start using your leveling screws for the base plate. You want to use your legs, right? You want to get that level with your legs. So what I like to do, I can see the bubble right here. I can see it's over this leg right here. So whatever leg it's over, that's the leg I'm going to go to. I put my hand here with my thumb here. Why? Because if I open this clamp, this leg could drop real fast, right? We don't want that. So we're going to unlock it. We're going to watch our bubble. We're going to take it down. Now it's over this leg. I'll come over. I'll adjust it. Move it back. And our instrument's in. The base plate is leveled by the legs only. Right? So now we're ready to go to the next step, which is the leveling vial. So you want to take the leveling vial and you want to position it over two screws. All right? So when you're doing this, don't go real fast because the bubble's going to want to travel real fast. Give it a chance to catch up to itself, all right? So I'm going to go real slow. It's already there. That quick. I'm going to take my instrument, my theodolite, and I'm going to go 90 degrees. Where this side is over the one leveling screw that we haven't used yet. And I'm only going to use the one leveling screw. Right here. And I'm going to take it over. Put it in the middle. Right? So now I know my base plate's level, my instrument's level. But I need to make sure I'm on my target, huh? So I'm going to flip back around. I'm going to check my plummet. It's off by just a little bit. So we can take and unscrew this. And now we can slide it on its base plate until we're over our survey point. Now we need to check all of our leveling bubbles again. We got to go through that same process because we, now we've moved it. Base plate looks great. I'm going to switch over here. I'm going to put it over the two leveling screws. Whew, looks good. So I'm going to go to the last one. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. Wait for it to stop traveling. We're level. Now we need to check it again though, huh? We want to make sure we're on our point. Want to come look and see if it's on its point? No money. All right. All right, so now you're ready to go. You would have another survey point over there. You could take, get your gun ready. I'm right-handed, so I always want my horizontal tangent screw and clamp on my right hand. This puts my vertical horizontal I mean vertical clamp and tangent screw on the front. That way if I'm here, I'm not fighting it, trying to unlock it and turn it, right? It's in front of me. I'm on the right. This is in front of me. So flip my scope over. You'll see right here on the top of the scope, 
This is an indicator that you can get close to your target with. If you look through it, it'll show a little plus, a little crosshair, so you can get close. I can get close to my, and then I can say, okay, I'm close. I'm gonna lock it. Now I'm gonna look through it. Your focus knob. This round piece right on the top turns. This is gonna focus in, just like a pair of binoculars, right? When you're using this, if you turn it one way and it doesn't focus and it stops, don't keep turning it. It's just a piece of rubber on there. It'll, it'll jam it, right? So just turn it back to the other way. You went too far. So we're gonna get close to our target. We're gonna focus in. Take your time, right? You want a good shot. You lock my tangent screw. Once again, it has crosshairs when you look through the scope. It also has a line above the crosshair and below the crosshair. Those are called stadia lines. Those are for measuring the distance of what the gun would be to the target that I'm shooting. So if you cannot see them and they're unclear, once again, you have this knob right here. When you turn it, it will darken those lines up. Make sure you can see them. All right, so I'm gonna flip it back over, lock my clamp. I'm gonna darken up my lines a little bit. I'm focused in. Now I can take and turn my gun on. So there's an orange button on the one side. Each side you turn it on, you'll see it has a digital setting. This gun is a 360 degrees. So it's degrees, minutes, and seconds. It's like a clock, right? You start at 12, when you go clockwise, it goes one, two, three, four, five, right? This gun does the same thing. When you have it on the right and there's a little button in the corner that says R, so now I know if I start here and I, I do my rotation, it's gonna start from zero and go up to 360. If I don't switch the button to the left, when I wanna go left, it'll start at 360 and go down. So you gotta make sure which way you're swinging your gun and your degrees and minutes. Once I'm locked onto my target and I like it, there's a button that's called zero set. Zero set, I push it in, I hold it. Sometimes it won't zero completely out. You can hit it again. As long as you're close, within a second, you're okay. Okay, so I'm within a second. Now, I can take my shot. So, for example, say I wanna do a 45 degree. I'll take and unlock it. I'm going to flip it to its right. Let's do uh, let's do a 90, like a building corner. Once I get it close, I'm never I'm not going to be able to get it right on the money. Once I get it close, I'm going to lock it. And then I can use my tangent screw to put it right perfectly on it. Remember, it moves really fast, so take your time. Layout is a very important part of our building construction, isn't it? 90 degrees, can you see that? So now I have swung a perfect 90 degrees over. You know how we do our three, four, five when we're laying out buildings? This comes in really handy. I can lay out on my control line. I can flip a 90 and now I have the control line going the other way. It's really important that when we go to put this away, we turn it off, we unlock our scope, we flip it up, we lock the scope, right? We'll open our box, make sure we're ready to go. Grab it by its handle. Now if you look under here, you can see two orange dots, right? See those two orange dots? You got those lined up. You can bring your theodolite over, set it down in the box, fits right in. You don't have to sit there and try to spin the base. Make sure you close your theodolite box at all times, never leave it open. You're good to go.